Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in for another review from the 2023 EMTV Shootout Series presented by Fox Racing and Schwalbe Tires. Today we're going to be reviewing the Rocky Mountain Altitude Power Play C90 Rally Edition. This is an aggressive and powerful uh, enduro, all-mountain, do-it-all e-bike that has been a lot of fun until Robert here decided to kill it. So <laughs> let's get into it. We'll talk about how it performs. So the Rocky Mountain is a 720 watt hour powered Dynami 4.0 workhorse with 108 newton meters of torque that absolutely let this bike crawl, scramble, and scrape its way up some of the steepest, rockiest, and muddiest trails that we put this bike on. Um, it was a lot of fun to ride on a wide variety of trails, but when it came time to climb, this thing had the juice and it was a lot of fun. Uh, bikes start at $61.99 and go up to the top of the line model here, the C90 Rally Edition, which is $11,399. Uh, it is a 29 inch wheeled only bike and has 170 millimeters of travel up front with a 160 millimeter uh, rear travel. This bike here is equipped with a Shimano XT brake and drivetrain system. Well, it was anyways. Did we talk about Robert breaking that already? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, the rest of the kit is uh, pretty solid, I'd say, with the race face, ARC 30 wheels, Fox transfer post, and it comes with Cush Core inserts, which I think is pretty awesome. And I think it's just forward thinking for what this bike's intentions are and the application. And I think it enhances the ride quality, to be honest. Yeah. It makes it quiet, track well, and a whole lot of fun. Um, so. Before we talk too much more about the on-trail performance, Robert, walk us through the geo on this thing. Yeah, so fairly purposeful, aggressive geometry on this thing, 63 and a half degree head tube angle, uh, 75 and a half degree effective seat tube angle, which isn't the steepest, uh, but still puts in a fairly comfortable position, I would say. Uh, this size large has a 475 millimeter reach and 639 millimeter stack. The rear end is 439 mil uh, static, but this is the only bike on test that has like a mid high pivot suspension system. So it does grow ever so slightly through the travel um, and does feel a little bit longer because of that, uh, which in my mind for the intentions is no terrible thing. Uh, and the overall wheelbase is 1,264 mil. Um, so yeah, certainly uh, sitting around about the middle of the category and uh, get kind of signaling it's fairly aggressive, but well-rounded intentions. Uh, so it is worth mentioning the geo numbers. He said, uh, give this bike a 34 millimeter bottom bracket drop, uh, which we'll talk about later, but this bike can vary greatly from those numbers because of Rocky's ride for uh, chip system as well as a short and long chainstay setting. So you can really fine tune the bike for your application and your terrain. And I think that's definitely important and something that a lot of riders should take time to consider uh, when they're out riding. Um, so let's get into the ride impressions. Nick, why don't you leave that off? Man, it's a really unique uh, motor system. This really rewards what effort you put in okay uh, i felt like you have a almost untapped ver amount of power in there right you can just push as hard as you want and it will reward you with it it does not have that soft pedal feel that the bosch and the shimano give you where you can kind of just soft pedal the thing and it'll get you up the mountain mm -hmm. but if you put the power in it'll get you there way faster yeah absolutely on the downhill though i feel like this is a, it's a race machine like th this is it to me this feels like a race bike okay in this spec like it's it's very supportive in the mid stroke it doesn't have it's not ultra forgiving to me uh and it kind of rewards you if you push hard it's gonna give you more out so it's kind of the motor gives sets the tone for the bike for me okay <clears throat> all right uh robert climbing impressions for you yeah uh i uh, 220 pounds, basically 100 kilos. Uh, the other motors on test would at times start to kind of bog down before this thing would even think about giving up. It's uh, 
yeah, really impressive what this thing can get me up. Um, the, just the power, the way that it's delivered is fantastic and it just feels so much quicker when I'm trying to get up the kind of steepest of uh, climbs. Um, and it's fairly well controlled as well. It's not like it's just spinning out the back wheel and uh, making it impossible for you to gain traction in the rear tire. It's fairly reactive to your input, but you do need to certainly give it some input before it gives you that power out. Yeah. And what were your thoughts on motor noise? Obviously, again, being a little heavier, yeah. the motors are typically working a little harder for you. Did you notice a difference in tone, volume? Yeah, so the Rocky system, I wouldn't say the motor itself makes a huge amount of noise, but there are a couple of different cogs in there that the chain's running on that do. Uh, so whereas other motors kind of have a bit of a whine to them or, you know, just a, a electronic noise almost, mm -hmm. this has a more mechanical rumble to it, which you can sort of feel as well a little bit, I'd say. Um, but for me, I'm happy with the power and uh, I would accept that and maybe stick in a set of headphones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I think uh, feel and audibly there there is a, a difference in the dynamic system compared to others. I definitely don't know that I would say that it was more irritating or loud or, or a huge detriment no. to my ride experience. Um, what was more noticeable than any difference in type of tone or sound was the power that you gave and also uh, the type of effort that you needed to yep. put in. It does require a little bit, I don't know if it necessarily requires, but it rewards more effort and more input. Um, the ludicrous mode, however, it is, is ludicrous. It, is. it absolutely just jets you up the hill and is a, is a lot of fun. Now from electronics integration, I really like the top tube display. It's yeah. a nice big screen. I think they call it the Jumbotron. Mm -hmm. Their toggle switch is sleek, it's never great. had any accidental bumps. It yeah. did a lot of stuff really well. An accidental thing, I don't even want to call it accidental, but something that did happen a lot, which really annoyed me, is uh, torque sensor errors. Um, we stand around a lot, we regroup a lot, we stop and wait for you know the camera crew to move to the next place or to have other riders session bits of trail and when you stop and sit there and rest your foot on the pedal the torque sensor error will pop up on the screen and it will either require you to stop you know get your feet off unweight to recalibrate for a moment or you might have to fully turn the bike off and then back on and I think that's a, a little bit of a bummer. Um, obviously not everyone is stopping and going so much when they're out riding, but we are, and it was something that definitely was annoying to our riders in that stop and go scenario. All right, so one other criticism from me before we move to the descending power and capability of this bike, uh, 170 mil cranks and a kind of a low bottom bracket height. Um, we talked about this last year, this bike, well, not this exact spec, but uh, another Rocky Mountain did very well, got some awards, I believe, yeah. right? We really enjoyed that bike. Um, there's still spec 170 cranks on here, and I, I wish that wasn't the case. But yeah, I think just myself and other riders were hitting the crank arms in the bottom brackets on you know tall roots or rocks, and it, it was just a bit of a bummer because this bike has so much power and you want to climb so much stuff and that low BB and the long crank arms was uh, a bit of a detriment. So uh, moving on from that, let's get into kind of the all around trail feel and the descending, which I think is another place this bike really shines. So Nick? Yeah, I, I think this thing has, it's very composed throughout all trail conditions. Okay. I felt like you could take this from the most chundry, rocky stuff we rode in the desert mm -hmm. to out here and smooth, you know, very loamy trails. And it doesn't really get out of sorts anywhere you're going. Yeah. It would just does well everywhere. Uh, one thing I did notice is it's kind of a long bike. And as you get into the suspension, it does squat out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you're really in a big compression in a corner, sometimes I felt like maybe the back end lagged a little bit, but it, rewards you with speed on the way out. You give it two pedal strokes and you're like snapped out just back to speed. So. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, Frenchie, do you remember how Frenchie felt about this bike? <laughs> Can you tell? 
Yeah? No? Do you remember? Do I remember how Frenchy felt? Yeah. Do you no, dude, I don't know how Frenchy feels. I think Frenchy really liked this bike. Yeah. He did, didn't he? Yeah. And, and it saved him pretty good. Can I mean, who would him? Because, oh. true. <laughs> <laughs> that bike saved him this morning. Remember it, that? Oh, yeah. Whoa! Whoa! It did. Gosh. He was that close to destruction. Yeah. So I, uh, Frenchy, I think he was saying like this bike was kind of a pinner race bike, and mm -hmm. he really enjoyed it. Thought it was a bit of a plow horse. He doesn't love the Dynamy motor system, so I think that's probably worth mentioning as well because I think we yeah. all really enjoy it. Uh, last year, he also didn't love it. He didn't come around to it. Still this year, um, it, it's hard to get the exact feel of why. I, I think. It just doesn't click with him, and it might not click with everybody, but... I think he just doesn't like putting in the extra effort. <laughs> He's just lazy, dude. Yeah. He's probably only getting 60 Newton meters. <laughs> like, so That's right, yeah. Oh, man, but he, he had a blast. I enjoyed this bike. You touched on it. It will get you out of some pretty hairy situations. The, the wheelbase growing can be a pro and a con, depending on the certain scenario or sure. situation you're in, but... Like when stuff got steep, I mean, obviously Rocky Mountain is in BC and they know a thing or two about building bikes that handle steep, wet, rooty terrain, which we put this bike through a lot of. And um, it's equally capable eating up fast, chundry rock sections as well. I think this is a really solid bike for an aggressive trail rider, someone who wants to push limits, ride fast, ride steep terrain and have a good suspension platform. Um, and likes to climb as well, yeah. right? Like it will get you up fast, but just know that you are, it will reward you for pushing a little bit harder. I think no no debate, I would be putting shorter cranks on this bike if yeah. I owned it. 160s if I can find them. Okay. All right, uh, ideal consumer, who do you think? Well, for me, this is just one of the bikes that absolutely loves to gobble up rough terrain okay. and charge. And it's the bike that feels most like a almost a motocross bike, I guess, when you're uh, pedaling up a hill and you can treat like an open bit of hillside as a scramble track. It's uh, <laughs> it's that good and that, that powerful. Uh, so people who like to climb silly steep stuff and people who like to ride down silly steep gnarly stuff as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Agreed, yeah. agreed. All right, well, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, props to Rocky Mountain for once again delivering a an awesome spec and a great looking bike here in the Altitude Power Play. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the rest of our e-bike shootout series. And of course, the grand finale round table where we put all 13 bikes together. And we'd like to thank Schwalbe and Fox Racing once again for helping make this series possible. Ask any questions you might have down below and we'll see you out on the trail. Mm -hmm.